I'm going to take the liberty of speaking on behalf of all runners when I say we would love to have a running gait like the pros. Sadly, that isn't going to happen overnight, but with the advancements in technology, could we start to get close? Well, today I have a selection of different running shoes with varying levels of support and cushioning. And with the help of some running analytics, I'm going to be trying to answer the question, can running shoes change our gait? century running shoes have developed far faster than our running pace but how much has the running gait of pros actually changed well the most significant difference I guess was going from barefoot to running with a shoe you might remember only a few decades ago that at the Olympics some athletes were still choosing to run barefoot Zola Budd was famous for breaking the world record in the 5k but more famous for choosing to race without shoes however now we know that shoe technology plays a huge part in running and to be competitive at the elite level when it comes to distance running all of those athletes need to have a carbon shoe in order to basically make it a level playing field I could easily spend a few minutes talking about the history and development of the running shoe but we've previously gone into detail on that on the channel so if you want to know more I'd recommend checking out that video but I want to know how running shoes can affect our gait or even if they can so to try and find out I'm going to be using the Wahoo Ticker X heart rate monitor which will measure my cadence my vertical oscillation and my ground contact time to give me a comparison of my overall running form and efficiency for each of the shoes for this comparison I have chosen four quite different pairs of shoes. I'm going to start off with the Vivo Barefoot, which I personally wear them as a fashion shoe in the summer. So today they are going to be put through their paces. Unsurprisingly, it's not hard to find a shoe that gives more support and cushioning than that one. So we're taking it up a level with this next one, the On Cloud Flow. And On claimed this shoe as a fast training and longer distance racing shoe as the stats back up. Now for the most advanced racing shoe. We're adding carbon fiber into the mix. It is the On Cloud Boom. Finally, at the comfort and cushioned end of the scale, we've got these rather well-worn on cloud stratus. So with this selection, we have a variety of weight, stack height, heel toe drop, cushioning and feel. And ultimately, each of these pairs of shoes are going to feel very different on my feet and it's then up to me to try and portray how that feels to you guys backed up with some data and then I'm hoping that we're going to get some slow-mo shots which will show if there's any visible difference in how my foot actually moves throughout the gate from shoe to shoe. to get started and I'm going to do my first lap with the Vivo Barefoot. Must admit I'm not looking forward to running barefoot but it's time to give it a go. So here goes. Three, two, one. Hop. a shoe that I've run a few marathons in it is the cloud flow let's see how this fares three two one go <laughs> This 
this shoe means business, it's time to test out the Cloud Boom. And I'm excited to run in these. I've only run in them once before for my 5K on the treadmill, so I'm looking forward to seeing how fast I feel. Okay, three, two, one, go. should not be overrated. I'm back to my very much tried and tested cloud strata. So I know they're gonna be comfy, but let's see how they feel. That was the final shoe tried and tested. And as you can see, it's a little bit chilly here, so I'm actually gonna go home, get warm, and look at the results and share those with you guys in a moment. Oh, it's so nice to get back into the warm, and I'm excited to discuss these results. And in feel alone, there was a significant difference. And when it comes to looking at the slow-mo to see if there's any visible difference, I'm gonna to have to leave that up to you guys because whilst I'm recording it, I've not had chance to look at those. But I am feeling that the difference might not be so notable as I was just running about 400 meters. But I want to look into the numbers now and instead of looking at each shoe individually, I'm going to look at one metric across all the shoes and we'll go through the metrics that way. And I think it makes sense to start with cadence as that's the most sort of readily available metric for most of you will be able to get on your smartwatches. And it's thought that an ideal cadence is around 180 strides per minute. It's sort of something you aim for and you look at the pros when they're running long distances. Now, I have to admit that actually my highest cadence was 190, which we'll go into discussion a little bit later as to is that too high or not? But that was with the barefoot shoes. And then the rest were all pretty close. So um, it was the Cloud Boom that was 188, so pretty much the same really. And the Cloud Flow, I had 184 strides per minute. And then the heavier, softer shoe, the Cloud Stratus, actually gave me 182. And I know those all sound really high, but it is worth noting that I do naturally have a high cadence and I was running maybe a tiny bit quicker than my 5K pace would be at the moment and it was a short distance. So we need to bear that into mind when we're looking at these numbers. We're moving on to my ground contact time and it's no surprise that it follows the same pattern as the cadence, as the two are inextricably linked. As your cadence increases, your ground contact time normally decreases. So my lowest ground contact time was actually with the barefoot shoe for just 211 milliseconds. Then it went up to 222 milliseconds with the cloud boom. The cloud flow was three milliseconds difference, so so tiny, probably insignificant, um, but it was the Cloud Stratus, which was unsurprisingly the highest, that was 233 milliseconds, but still not a huge variety between the three, considering there's quite a lot of give in that shoe compared to running barefoot. And then the final metric we're looking at today is vertical oscillation, and that's a number you want to be the, the lower the better as you're not wasting energy spending time in the air. And the patterns remain the same here actually. So um, with the barefoot shoe, I had the smallest vertical oscillation of just 8.15 centimeters. Cloud boom was 8.36. The cloud flow 8.48. So those two seem to be quite similar on most of these metrics. And then the cloud stratus, that's where the biggest difference was. So I'm obviously getting more spring, but I'm spending more time going up and as a result, probably wasting more energy. But some of that energy is coming from the shoe. That was um, a, a lot more at 9.06 centimeters. Well, I think those numbers only tell a very small part of the story because at the end of the day, feel is a big thing and 
There's a few things we couldn't measure and that was what it would actually look like over a real life distance race. So if I did run the full 5k, obviously I didn't have time or energy to be doing that in the experiment. It would show, I think, quite a decline in the shoes that gave me less support. So if I look at the barefoot shoe, yes, it came out top on the numbers and maybe my form looked brilliant for that short period of time. But when I was wearing them, my feet felt so vulnerable. The heads of my metatarsals as I was landing on the hard ground. Admittedly, the snow helped because that lessened that impact slightly. But even on the downhill, I was being forced to run really um, forwards and on my toes, which I wouldn't be able to su sustain for a longer distance. And I think I would soon, I, my calf was starting to even hurt on just 400 meters. So I think I'd soon start to see a significant significant decline with that and I just felt like there wasn't a change of gear there was nothing else there there was nothing to help me with that then on the other end of the spectrum there was a cloud stratus which like I mentioned is my go-to comfy shoe I feel super supported I feel like I could run in it all day but it feels really heavy especially compared to the others when I put it on and and again it would feel like it would restrict me over a longer period of time because the weight would just slow me down and even the ground contact time slow so it's sort of like a slow comfortable shoe and as a result I feel like I'm running more upright because I'm much more comfortable to heel strike so there was a very slight bit that was downhill and that shoe felt more comfortable with that because I'm quite happy to stride out and let the shoe absorb the impact and then it was the the cloud flow and the cloud boom which looks very close on numbers but they actually and especially even when you compare the shoe and the weight's quite similar there is a bit more of a heel toe drop with the cloud boom um, with the carbon plate in it but the feeling is significantly different so the cloud flow i've run a marathon in before now admittedly with orthotics touch on that in a moment but um it felt super light and it was giving me enough of a room for toe off and I felt like I could lean into the stride and I had enough energy return from it. So it felt really good. But then I put the cloud boom on afterwards and I just felt like I was getting more return for the energy I was putting in and it was easier to roll off the front of it. So I felt like I had more of a forward lead, whether I did or not, I'm not sure. But that shoe definitely felt like it would be the most economic. If I ran a longer distance in, I would still get the energy return. As I start to fatigue, I think I would see less difference in my stride from that. But obviously this is all going from my feel. If you are someone who over pronates and you would feel an even more significant difference running with a, say a barefoot shoe compared to something very supported because that could completely change your biomechanics. And I'm aware that I was very much concentrating on how I was running and I wasn't tired. And that makes so much difference. If you look at a photo of yourself from the beginning of say a marathon to the end, I think you'd notice how different your stride is. And that's when these shoes would really come into play. But due to lockdown, we've had to go with our own experiment for now and you guys are gonna have to just trust me on my feel. And I personally would love to do the science on this. So hopefully when we're back to normal, we can get into a lab and actually experiment and test my running economy with these different shoes, maybe by doing some VO2 testing or something like that, which I would love to see the results from it. Hopefully you have found this as interesting as I have and you've learned something from it. If you've got any really significant um, experiences yourself from running in different shoes or measuring any running economy from that then do let me know and share with everybody else you can do that in the comments section below hopefully you've enjoyed it give us a thumbs up if you have and follow us on our social media and give us a follow on youtube as well